guys. Thank you. have 10 minutes or so, so I'm going to get right to the introductions. Uh, without further ado, uh, some of the talented cast and uh, the creators of the show, of course, I'm going to start with Mr. Josh Dallas. <laughs> Jennifer Goodwin. Executive producers, creators, and my very good friends, Eddie Kitsis and Adam Horowitz. <laughs> Miss Emma Swan herself, Jennifer Morrison. <laughs> A little frightened, Robert Carlyle. Certainly not least, the mayor of Storybrooke and perhaps the evil queen herself, Lana Perea. Uh, so Eddie and Adam, I remember very distinctly, I think we were somewhere in the neighborhood of the third season of the show when you first wandered in my office and we were, we were t having one of those moments where we just didn't really want to be working on Lost at all. And uh, you guys said, hey, we have a cool idea for a TV show. Uh, I think we just watched it. Can you guys tell us a little bit more of the origin story behind Once? Well, um, it started probably about eight years ago. And uh, Eddie and I had uh, just finished working on Felicity. And, um, and uh, coming off that Carrie show, Russell is here today. <laughs> Thank you, Carrie. Thanks, Carrie. Um, Basically, coming off that show, our agent said, you know, what, what, what kind of, you need a new sample, what would you, what would you like to do, what kind of show would you like? And, and we kind of started to think about fairy tales and why we like them, and, and we were kind of in a place where we were like, you know, the thing I love most about fairy tales, they're like a lottery ticket. You buy them in the hopes that your life will change, you know, that you one day are sweeping up for your stepsister and the next you get to go to the ball. So, uh, and we were just trying to talk about that, and, and we this wanted idea to, came. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, we, we had a big problem, which was, we had no idea how to tell us. No, and so thankfully, Cut to Lost, where we uh, were very lucky to be with Mr. Lindelof, who helped us out of an eight-year writer's block on how to tell this story, and by virtue of us coming to him in November and crying on his couch that we had no ideas left. And now you see what happened. Um, Jennifer, I know you were one of the first uh, pieces to fall into place cast-wise. What was it like for you reading the script, especially coming off of uh, another incredible show, Big Love? What, what made you um, want to dive it, uh, back into this immediately? Well, I was reading TV scripts in the first place because I understood that that's where all the great writers have gone. And uh, <laughs> it's true. And I got a phone call that Eddie Kitsis and Adam Horowitz were offering me the role of Snow White. And I actually said to my agent, I'll take it. And they said, you need to read it. And I said, no, seriously, I'll take it. <laughs> and, uh, and I did read it that night, again and again and again. And I was up all night until my manager woke up um, because I needed him to know that we were taking this job. And uh, it really didn't take much um, it really didn't take much. I mean, I read it and I was inspired to tell this story for the next, you know, we pray many years and dig my elbows in. There's really nothing else like it on television. And, uh, and Jennifer Morrison, obviously, uh, from what we've just seen, these guys all get to play two roles on, on both sides of it. Is, it. is it a relief for you to just just be Emma, or do you do you sort of wish that you got to uh, do you sort of get to wish that you get to put on the tights as well? I only get to play one character, but I get two mics. <laughs> um, uh, you know, I, I'm a little jealous. You know, obviously, it seems like it would be fun to uh, wear other people's pretty costumes, but. Um, it's exciting to create a character that's brand new, a new fairy tale character. Um, it, it's her new fairy tale, so it's kind of this incredible adventure of just letting Eddie and Adam write this incredible stuff and, and hope that we that I do it justice. 
Uh, Josh, as I, as I was watching this, I was realizing that sort of every woman's fantasy must be having a man have a sword fight while he's holding a baby. <laughs> um, what is it, <laughs> what's it like when people say, what are you working on and who are you playing for you to say, I'm, I'm Prince Charming. They always <laughs> laugh, so I don't, I don't know what that means. They always laugh first. But, you know, it, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing to play that part and play that kind of... Icon, but you know, you know, as an actor, you can't really think I'm playing Prince Charming. You, you know, you're playing a man with, uh, you know, with issues and problems and situations just like anybody else. So that's how you have to approach it. Will we find out his first name? <laughs> we might. We might. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it's, it's Steve. <laughs> Innocent Miss Emma Swan, Jennifer Lawrence. Sinister evil queen Lana Maria. This next woman we're going to get to see more of. She uh, has a little streak of red in her every week. Uh, little red, Megan Ori. several sects of super fans out there for this next series regular. Uh, we love her as Claire and we're going to love her even more as Belle. Emily Gravin. <laughs> Alright guys, this is the best looking cast on television I think. It's a you know, a lot of shows attempt um, musical episodes, uh, some better than others. We First, Robert, if you would uh, give us a deary. Oh, 
amazing. I feel like we always get pleasantly surprised. Mm -hmm. I'm, I just finished the second season of Orphan Block, and so I'm like obsessed with finding that cast because I think they're so awesome. Game of Thrones, yeah. yeah. Watching Hannibal all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Is American oh, Horror yeah. Story here? Yeah. Damn it. Hmm. I don't know if we ever all ever survive. Do we ever survive? I don't know. Maybe with this we will survive. Uh, hey Josh. Bananas. Oh, Hello, sir. Hello. Hello. Oh yes, and flats. That that's part of my survival kit. Oh, She's smarter than me on that one. I didn't bring flats. Jama. Jama. <laughs> wow. Well, thanks. She would just take control. You know, sort the situation out. Don't you think? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Who can we throw under the bus that's not here? Ooh. Um. <laughs> Robert Randy? Carlyle. I wouldn't trust him. <laughs> he would yeah. survive though at all costs. He would survive, yeah. but yeah. at the cost. He probably of all wouldn't of us. help anyone else though. No, yeah, he would. Yeah. No, he would. He would let us all perish. <laughs> Hi, I'm Josh Dallas. I'm Jennifer Morrison. I'm Jared Gilmore. I'm Lana Perea. I'm Emily Draven. I'm Colin O'Donoghue. And you're watching <laughs> TV Guide Magazine. Never have I ever had so much fun and excitement in one day as I have at Comic-Con. <laughs> Do you think there's going to be anybody new this season? Oh, there's going to be lots of people new this season. We're going to Camelot, so we have we have Merlin, we have King Arthur, we have we, we, we have the entire kingdom of Camelot, so there's going to be a lot of new people. We've already got Sean and Rebecca. I don't know if there's room for anyone else. <laughs> no, I love those two, by the way. So excited they're with us all the time now. I think it's Adam and Eddie kind of feel like that we're almost kind of going back to the basics, the core of what season one was about, but with the extra dimension of Camelot and Merlin and King Arthur. And We know we're going to see Lancelot again. We know we're going to meet Merlin. We know we're going to meet Guinevere, and today we let everyone know we're going to meet Merida. Who's going to play Merida? Uh, her name is Amy Manson, and okay. she's fantastic. New cast members means new love triangles, new relationships. Any that you can let me in on? Oh, well, you know, we're going to pick up with the ones we've already had, and, you know, who knows? I mean, Henry's getting that age, so he might, he might find his first crush this year. Maybe it's time. He's growing up, or our little boy is growing up. Yeah, and he's got a fake ID. Oh, no. No, he doesn't. He doesn't have a fake ID. That's a joke. New people means new relationships, right? That's correct. So you're going to see, you know what? You're going to see Charming grow out with <laughs> King Arthur. And you're also going to see him be his most heroic that we've seen him yet. Is there anyone in particular that you would like to see on the show? Christopher oh, Walken. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Walken. I love him. Like time. dancing, like through storybook. Who could Bill Murray play? I love Ooh. him so much. That's I just, one. I just heard he was here, and that I haven't seen him, and I'm really upset. So if you're here, hi. <laughs> So, I don't Ian, know. so Ian McKellen. Ian McKellen would be great. Kevin Spacey would be great. Gary Oldman would be great. You know, if they just wanted to come and pop in, I'm sure. I'm sure all the Adam old English greats, you know, like all the old English are great actors would be great. Finish my sentence. Never have I ever. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> uh, never have I ever rode on a whale's back. Oh, that's a good one. Um, right. That was perfect. <laughs> Dressed up as a clown. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's so many things I've never done. Never have I ever had so much fun and excitement in one day as I have at Comic Con. Be that, Bex. Uh, never have I ever had a job where I feel so incredibly blessed that you could pinch me and I could die and I feel like I've officially peaked. Never have I ever been to Egypt and I really want to go. <laughs> Disney's making a movie of about Prince Charming's brother. I think it's a brother. great idea. But who do you think should be cast in it? That's what I was getting at. Right. Right? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. And for more awesomeness from Comic-Con, click to the left to see Tyler Posey and his posse at the Teen Wolf panel. Or click to the right to find out what happened when the Mockingjay Part 2 cast reunited at Comic-Con.